So that's the derivative in some sense. Of course, there's a, big, there's a big mystery piece right now. I admit that this is a big mystery. But you have to admit that, in fact, there's something interesting has happened. What do we see about the derivative? The original function was n to the x. And what do I see about its derivative? Its derivative is also n to the x times some mystery number. So the derivative of this function is actually equal to it's the original function itself multiplied by some number. And the question now is, what's the number? Well, let's see what that number is. How can we figure out exactly what that number is? Well, it turns out that that number, well, let's think about that for a second. How can we figure out that number? What if we evaluated the derivative at 0? If I evaluated the derivative at 0, what would I see? Well, wherever I see an x, I would plug in 0. And where do I see an x here? Just there. There are no x's in here. That's just a number. So I put in the 0 there. I would see n to the 0 power. And n to the 0 is just 1. So what I would see is that f prime, f prime at 0 would equal that mysterious, mysterious number because the n to the 0 would just drop out. Well, what is f prime of 0? That represents the slope of the tangent line when x equals 0. So in particular, if I go back to this picture for just a second, what I see is that l function, that mysterious l function, is just the slope of the tangent line where, it crosses the, where the curve crosses the, the y-axis. So whatever that slope is, that slope is that mysterious number. That slope turns out to be this L. Because we've seen that f prime at 0 equals just that number. So that's the slope at 0. OK, well, now what does that equal? Well, for 2, for example, I don't know. Why don't we try to estimate that number? and estimate, in fact, the limit by evaluating it on a computer. Now, I actually have a computer here, so let's do a little computer experiment right now. What we're trying to do is figure out that mysterious number. That's the goal. And so I have a computer right here for us. Let's see if I can bring this up for you. Wow, look at this. We actually have a whole computer here. It's high tech here, folks. Let me turn it on. I hope it goes on. We're not that high tech. Ah, OK, there we go. OK, and now let's try some examples. Now remember what I'm trying to do here. What am I trying to compute? Let me just write this out. What I'm trying to compute is the following. I'm trying to figure out what this L is. Let me do it for 2. So I want to figure out L of 2, which I remind you is the limit as delta x approaches 0 of what? Well, of 2 to the delta x minus 1 all over delta x. That's the limit I want. That's the limit I want to figure out, which we've seen actually is represented by the slope of the tangent line when, it cross, when the curve crosses the, the y-axis. Well, what I'm going to do here is, since I don't know how to compute that limit, I'm just going to plug in some, some numbers for delta x that are very, very small, like we did in the very beginning of our discussions way, way long time ago. If you can't do a problem, try to estimate it. Try to figure out roughly what the limit is by taking a look at small values for delta x. So I actually wrote a little program to do that. Let's put in some values right now. So for example, let's put in, Let's evaluate this for delta x being, let's say, 0.1, which is a small number. That's close to 0. 0.1 is a small number. And what do we see this equals in that case? Oh, it's an old computer, folks. You sort of wind the crank, crank, crank. Oh, there it is. It turns out that it's 0.7177. OK, let's try even a smaller one and see, if it, see what that equals. So let's try a smaller one. Let's try, that was 0.1 we tried. How about trying 0.01? Oh, that was right. 0.6955. Got a little smaller. Let's try another one. How about 0 0.001? 693. Seems to be sort of leveling off here around 6.69. Let's try one last one, maybe. How about 0 0.001? 
That's, notice that number is very, very close to 0. So it's very, this should be very close to the limit. Again, what I'm doing is I'm taking that number for delta x, and I'm plugging in 2 to the 0. 0.0001 minus 1 divided by 0. 0.0001 and see what that equals. That equals, look, 0. 0.6931 and so on. So we can see this thing seems to really be heading to around roughly 0. 0.693 stuff. So roughly, it's around 0.69. OK, great. What does that mean, by the way? Let me just recap and show you exactly what that means. Got so many props here, I have no idea. But that means is that if I come back to here, the slope of this line right there, in fact, let me draw that in. The slope of this line, this slope is approximately 0.693. Six nine three. That's what we just saw. OK, let's try another example. How about if we looked at a different curve? What if we looked at 3 to the x? Now remember what 3 to the x would look like. Since the 3 is bigger, the curve would be sharper. It grows faster. So it would look something like this. It would start way down below and then come up and grow up. That would be 3 to the x. It's a sharper curve like that. The tangents, notice there, are actually are actually more steep than the than the other one, and in particular here, you'll see the tangent of the uh, of the orange one is actually steeper at at uh, x equals zero. Let me draw that one in. Let me draw that one in in purple. If I draw that one in, what does it look like? It's a little steeper, and that has some slope. And what is the slope of that? Well, the slope of that we know. The slope of that would just be l evaluated at 3 rather than at 2 to find that limit for 3. Now, we know it's going to be bigger than this number because we see it's steeper than that. Let's see exactly what that is. 